How much damage against Arvin? Oh, what? Flood! What a beautiful, juicy flood! And he okay, so we have the red goblin player Mustafa at the bottom side of the map against the blue Isengard player Archangel at the top side of the map. And Erich 3 is pretty much like a redesign of the map Erich, which is already existing in both games, BFME 2 and in Rise of the Witch King, but it's a great redesign. We have a troll layer on the side lanes, right and left. And it's pretty basic map, you know, we have a walk layer around the corner, same also top left, to make the map symmetrical, you know, and goblins in the middle of the map. So we have actually three different kind of creeps on this map, goblin layer, walk layer and troll layer. And uh, where is Balindru? Balindru is potentially sleeping. He needs to go to the school tomorrow, you know? Okay, so what is the start of the Goblin player? He's building four tunnels at the beginning of the game. On the other side, the Isengard player is building two furnaces. Three furnaces. And he might even go for the furnace number four. Where is the second builder? Oh, there we go. He's building a work pit. I mean, that's a very interesting build style and order for the Isengard player Archangel I need to say haven't seen this for a long time I mean normally you see the production buildings around the fortress or being offensively built but he's playing he's building them kind of defensively but not around the fortress on the other side we see four tunnels into the goblin cave number one and the builder the second builder from Mustafa is also around this area I'm assuming he's saving either for either money for the goblin cave or potentially for the fissure or the spider pit and he's gonna choose the spider pit as the second production building to get eventually some spider links on the field or immediately to the spider riders after upgrading the building to level 2. Let's see his choice. The builder. The golem is also around by the way. And once again, I would love to see the ring heroes in BFME 2 at least one time in this tournament. It would, me actually, it would make me actually quite happy, but the problem is uh, the ring heroes are busted, like literally busted. But also very hard to be taken down. Not the ring heroes, but the golem actually. Golem is extremely tanky. Okay, and in the meantime, he's also building the second goblin cave. Spider pit is level one. He might go for the spider links first. Yep, that's gonna be the case. And Archangel, the Isengard player, is now building the Uruk pit as his second production building in the match against goblins. Borg riders are on the field. The builder from Isengard is looking around this area. Yeah, 12,000 health. But, you know, it's kind of it's kind of okay because uh, you get a huge reward when you kill him, dude. Like, the ring heroes, they are not Sauron or Galadriel anymore. They are like Melkor and Manwe, you know? They are like uh, Mayas. They are like gods. With me getting early to work tomorrow, well, I couldn't sleep anyway. I just woke up, you know? After three hours sleep. And thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. But bye, Lee. Means a lot. That still only counts as one. <laughs> Golem is quite tanky, yeah. Okay, uh, I mean, of course, with the Warp Riders, he was able to defend himself. Like, that's expected. Against one single Goblin Warrior, what can they do against, against such a reckless seed? And I don't know the interaction, by the way, between Warp Riders and Spiderlings. Because remember, in Rise of the Witch King, Spiderlings are a solid counter to the enemy cavalry units. And I was, I was not able to see the 1v1 situation yet. This Archangel... Guy good, uh, he's an expert player. I mean, he has the expert statu status, actually, sta I can't even talk, status in the game replays.arc. He's a very, very old player who's playing now for ages. Actually, Warp Pit is quite squishy, guys. Or the Spiderlings are just dealing insane amounts of damage. He might be able to take it down as he's building up the Warp Pit to level 2. That's an investment of 150. And that's going to be a uh, HP boost, by the way. And for that reason, he was able to save this, and the Spiderlings are gone. Also, perfect timing with the crossbow man from the Uruk pit. But in the meantime, Goblin player is building an army worthy of Moro. He's actually recruiting many, many Goblins slash Spiderlings at the same time. And if you ever invest 500 into the Spider pit, you will also get the chance to recruit some Spider Riders. Okay, the Spiderlings are quite squishy units, but they are extremely mobile and very good for harassment. He's gonna commit, recommit on this uh, level 2 warp pit, which is quite slow, and he should be easily able to take it down. But is it worth it to sacrifice this many more units? Nice body blocking, perfect timing for the warp riders to come out, but I believe it's gonna just delay, and the warp pit has been taken down. And Archangel has only managed to get two warp riders on the field, 
for now he might always build the or rebuild the war pits later on but for now he has to keep those two warcraft battalions he has on the field alive hey nikki funky you see like streaming lead is always nice because then we get finally to see nikki in the stream too nikki is from us and it's for her good time you know the furnace is getting bullied he will be definitely able to take it down furnaces are extremely squishy just like the tunnels tunnels are the squishiest buildings in terms of resource buildings at least this furnace is unprotected will also be taken down mustafa is doing a great job scouting all the time five power points collected for the isengard player archangel after the vision of palantia 500 command points on the other side we have the same command points available for the red goblin player mustafa and he has nearly only three power points collected after the keef pads so Archangel is, uh, long story short, Ar Archangel is leading in terms of power points. But it's not a massive lead, it's not game changing or a game winning. Okay, I mean this is looking good for Archangel too. He will be able to defend this area and take down the tunnel right after. That's why you need spider riders and that's all about time to recruit them. Because Isengard has not many pikemen and with many pikemen I mean literally zero pikemen. And the spider riders they can actually be quite devastating in this kind of situations. I like the mobility of the Warcriders definitely, and the whole ability is also full different in compared to the whole ability in uh, Rise of the Witch King. I mean, the game is just feeling like a brand new game, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a relation from BFME to Rise of the Witch King, everything is pretty much different. Like, the heroes are different, their abilities are different, the power points are different, the unit stats, the buff, the leadership, everything is literally different. So I believe there are too many differences to compare these games with each other nowadays, you know? Alright, crossbow man, now he's finally one pikeman that's very important to keep them protected, of course. Hey, Kola, welcome. Now we will see about the placement of the pikeman and how well he will be able to protect his crossbow man army against the one single spider rider. Vision of Palantir was used. And I feel, I feel like Mustafa doesn't have too much on the field. This might be hard to defend. He has to commit, of course. He can't let them do the amount of damage they are looking for. Oh, the pikemen are not in position. No way. That's the. That's what I was afraid of, guys. I knew it. I knew it. I secretly knew it. Fiesta. Fiesta. 10 power points collected for Isengard. After the vision of... Look his money, though. What's going on? Like, he is, he's rich. Like, this guy is, like, making bank. You know what I'm saying? Pikemen of Dunn and Summon is going to be his choice. He might use it right off the bat. On the other side, goblins, they are not that rich. Seven power points almost collected after the key pads, which is being currently used to nullify enemy leadership bonuses and buffs, and on top of that, also make them weaker. Even though the, bites, uh, the fight started badly, but Isengard was still able to win this. Remember, these are no, this is no rubble of mindless oryx. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad, and they have also big D. Alright. Seven power points collected. Oh, he's running it down. The spider riders are quite expensive though. They cost 6 hundo. Pretty, pretty expensive. Bilal, how did you say it? Okay. I mean, look at the protection with the, with the pikemen. I like that. This is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick. Their shields broad. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. And I believe this is gonna be over. I mean, he's trying to deal some counter damage, but I guess that's not gonna... Oh yeah. The Isengard horn for the victorious Isengard player Archangel. In the first game, Isengard against Goblins, he was able to win as, as Isengard. On the map, Erich 3. Yes. Guys, should I disable the fortress floors? I think they are kind of killing it, you know, in some, <coughs> in some uh, matches. Especially when you are seeing the evil faction, it's always the same painted land design around the fortress. And that looks kind of ugly, not gonna lie. I don't like this. But I will keep it if you guys want to have it. Other than that, I will just remove it from the pet switcher. Alright, so we have the red model player, Mustafa, against the blue model player, Archangel, in the game number two. Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse, Orc Pits, Orc Pits. And Mustafa is going for more like an economical start. He's building up to four slaughterhouses first.
games yeah i would love to see some more lead game stuff you know what i'm saying i want to see like really late game potential watch map we have seen this map many many times but i will show you the map anyway just in case you missed the other showcases yesterday like you have nazgul's looking around this area and they are looking of course for the hobbitses you know we have the maria dog brandy Buck, samurai scamji frodo baggins and uh you know of course peregrine took lurking around this area so it's a pretty nice map looks like that i will also be zooming out a bit so you can see the troll layer design around the design you have like ponies they are not scared from the troll though troll is taking care of these and yeah looks pretty nice brains new map also uh, also was made by attempt in the chat what is the plan from mustafa i'm wondering you see rushing a nazgul potentially you might rush a nazgul on his black horse on the other side, Archangel is going for like an economical spam. Uh, not spam, I mean Orc spam. Not eco spam. Orcs are quite cost efficient here. They cost even less in compared to Rise of the Witch King. They cost 60 and 30 command points, which means you can actually spam them even when your command points are low, as well as your resource income is kind of low. And you don't really get hurt by losing them, because the thing is, your opponent doesn't get, it doesn't get too much EXP or power points for killing this stuff. But you can keep him kind of distracted all the time, you know? 4 out of 9, yeah. I mean, we are using all the brand new maps from you. Uh, we are using Brandy Hills. Um, see, it's Erich 3. What else are we using? Yeah, it's a Morse 2. Yeah, Nazgul Rush was indeed the case. Okay, uh, you see, like, what? You don't even one-shot them by trampling them down. That's kind of unfortunate. But he's hitting multiple units. I was expecting, I mean, because he was using whole ground stance. That's what it is. I think in the normal stance, they would be dead. Smart move, he's running into the troll. But I believe you should be just keep going, you know? Because you need to kind of force the Nazgul to be split. Like he does. He's doing a fanta fantastic job. He's sending now from middle of the map, from the bottom side and from the top side. And Mustafa is only one single Nazgul, and this Nazgul can't be everywhere. Tavern for the Corsairs, they are quite as, uh, quite expensive though. Like, they cost a lot. They cost even more than Urukai and, and anything else. Like, you know, 400 for a Swordman. Kinda tough. Orcs, you can get more than 6 battalions of Orcs for the price of one Corsair. Slaughterhouses are a bit tankier than, than furnaces or Malon trees or tunnels. But you you know, you see what I mean? Like the Nazgul can't be everywhere. But here's the debuff now. The debuff system in BFME 2 is actually very, very efficient. Uh, because it's also nullifying enemy buffs and leaderships at the same time. Big commitment against the tavern. But orcs are not dealing too much damage. So with the help of the Corsairs, you might be able to defend yourself. They are also using the melee attack, not the fire bombs. But during all this time, important to mention is the fact that the model player Archangel is untouched. Is you know, Mustafa is kind of in a, in a prison situation. He's only able to defend himself. That's all he can really do. He is not able to go for a counterattack yet. But he was doing a good job defending himself. Like, he was keeping those slaughterhouses protected, which is very important. And after the first couple of minutes into the game, Archangel has 450 command points available for now. He was picking the Tainted Land at the beginning of the game as the power point spell from the spellbook. On the other side, Mustafa also picking the Tainted Land. He has 2 power points collected and 450 command points available as well. Archangel is now leading to the work layer at the top left corner. How good are fire bombs? They are pretty solid against buildings. And uh, you know, I like the way of the Corsair design. It's like a sportive unit, you know. You want to have a front line, for example, like Easterlings around, Orcs around. And then you put them in between the army with the fire bombs against buildings. And they deal constant damage with the fire on the ground. So pretty effective. But here they are quite expensive. I mean, they are potentially worth it, I guess. Which makes them definitely more impactful than they are in Rise of the Witch King. They are pretty underrated. And also underperforming. The Nazgul is doing a phenomenal job. Level 4 already can be that easy. Like, leveling up those heroes from level 1 to level 4 is not a big challenge. But everything after that is going to be kind of tough. And once again, you have no lancers from the Haradrim Palace, guys. But you have access to multiple Nazguls, uh, which are quite cost-efficient, from the fortress. 
Level 4, both to Nazgul's. One from Mustafa, one from Archangel. And Archangel is now going for a massive attack. He has also Easterlings around. That's going to keep the Nazgul kind of away, you know? Use alt? Uh, I don't know. I need to, we need to ask them, you know? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, maybe in some situations, but not always. Mustafa is to re-coordinate the army, you know? Okay, big commitment. Does he have eye or something? Nope, they have only tainted land. The thing is, when he uses that now, Mustafa can just use his own and cover this, you know? That's what I mean. Now the buff from Archangel is gone, and Mustafa has now his units buffed. That's why you need to be kind of smart about when to use your tainted land. Especially in a mirror match, you need to know your opponent has potentially the same ability like you do. So using it first is going to give him the chance to just cover that. Like this, like it was the case. He was able to take down only one single slaughterhouse with this many units. And that's going to give up now Mustafa the chance to go for a massive counterattack. He has collected nearly 6 power points. The blue murder player Archangel. 550 command points available. Mustafa has 5 power points collected and 550 command points available as well. So it's pretty even actually, pretty even back and forth. But again, one single attack is able to change literally everything. This is going down for sure. Mustafa is not going to be able to protect this. Nazgul is doing a fantastic job, almost level 5. We have so many Nazguls. Look, we have even more Nazguls you know, coming from this area. Okay. Alt is when you, this, you know, when, how can I say? Like, you can give him waypoints and stuff like that, you know? Like a route, you know? You can say the unit is moving here first and there, then there, then there, then there, you know? You give him like a, like an order of the, of the path he needs to walk through. Like, normal, you right click only, right? So when you want to move, you right click only, and then they are kind of moving the shortest du direction. Or most, most of the time, the units in BFME games or in any RTS games really are not the smartest. So they're going to choose the pathway they want to choose. Which is not always the best. By using Alt button on your keyboard, you can actually tell them which path they are supposed to exactly move, you know. Almost 10 power points collected for Archangel. After Now we go. 800 command points. Massive army from Archangel at the bottom right side. Going for a, uh, going for a potential attack. Falcon, uh, we are we lowered this already from three minutes to one minute, but I can do that. But it's only for one minute. Three minutes kind of felt a little bit too long, you know. You guys are having so many points, holy moly! Falcon, Kardeş, Mosh, Galdin, Sefalar, Getirin, Glorfin, the Napius, Nimes, and Glorfin. This and that's the English channel. What you're seeing, no other. I'm seeing you. I'm sorry. You're saying, "What are you? What are you? What are you?" But not during tournament games. Yeah, I will give you our points back, though, uh, Falcon. I will give your points back. We can do that in between the game breaks and stuff like that, but not during uh, the cast of a, of a game in a tournament match, you know, in the middle of the game. Industry was his choice from Archangel and also from Mustafa. He was using that on the slaughterhouse behind, and now he's building some expansions around the fortress for some greater defense. 550 for Mustafa and 850 now for Archangel. And look at the protection of the slaughterhouse, do you see that? You see Orc Pit, Orc Pit, Haradrim Palace in the front to protect this and keep this alive. Look out. <laughs> okay, Nazgul. Nazgul's actually the most seen mortal heroes by far. And with this much money, you see at the bottom left side of your screen, there is a high chance that Archangel might either go for a Felbis or even save up for the Witch King for 5,000. And I believe he's going for the big boy. This is going to be, of course, the Witch King. For you fool, no man can kill me. Also, this is going down, unfortunately, for Mustafa. Mustafa is getting... Uh, yeah. Hey, look, Balindru is here. Finally, but everyone is asking for Balindru. Where is Balindru? And I said, Balindru is potentially drinking his milk and going to sleep because his mom is going to be angry, you know? Balindru, Chvitanga, why are you not sleeping yet? Almost 8 power points collected. I mean, the thing is that he has now such a massive lead. And yeah, he has Witch King coming. Witch King cooking. Definitely Witch King is on his way. Archangel has so much money, dude. 
And industry is such a power spike, you know, for the motor faction. Just like in Rise of the Witch King, really, like being able to boost the resource income up to 300%. Oh, really? You don't have school tomorrow? Oh, nice. Nice to hear, man. Nice to hear. Okay, we can also play all, all night long, dude. I don't mind because I was literally taking a huge nap. I was, I was, <laughs> I wanted to sleep about 10 to 15 minutes, you know, I was kind of tired today, my, I was bringing my daughter very in the mor uh, early in the morning to the kindergarten, you know, needed to stay with her also for two hours because she doesn't feel comfortable yet when I just leave, so you need to stay until she feels more comfortable, so I was extremely tired, I couldn't sleep yesterday, because, and that's my problem, you know, the first day of the week after Sunday is always the toughest for me, the hardest one. Because uh, Sunday you wake up later, then you you are not able to sleep early on, so you sp sleep extremely late, and then you have to wake up very early though in the upcoming day. And then the entire day you are like a ghost, you know, you are like the white going around, and you're like wololo, wololo. You don't know what's going on. War chant? No. Oh, there comes Witch King. There you want? There we go, Witch King. That is Witch King, my dude. He's getting dismounted from his uh, from his fell beast. For whatever reason. I mean, I think... Oh my goodness. The Witch King, dude. Maze attack, radius, effect improved at level 5 and level 8. Oh my. This guy is sitting like a truck. Uh, this guy is, hit, is, is the truck himself. The Dread Visage, very similar to the uh, enemy, uh, to the Diva from the Nazgul. Pretty much identical. Screech with level 4 and then with level 10, the Hour of the Witch King. But you see, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, they are able to level up to level 4 in a, in a second, really. And look his uh, HP, though. He has 6,760 HP with level 2. And his melee damage is 6, 671. That's a lot. And actually, he is getting 11 more melee damage per level. As well as a huge damage boost. But, oh, we have Mouth of Sauron. <laughs> Alright, uh, I don't know if this guy is able to deal with the big boy, though. I don't know. We will see about that. The thing is, this guy is completely different here. I will make a compliment to you. Balindru, you are the best editor slash moderator any streamer slash YouTuber can ever have. Thank you for your amazing work. Who's also managing our second YouTube channel? This guy, this all the Twitch highlights. He's actually cutting them off and uploading them to the YouTube channel, which he didn't do for two for, for two days, Kappa Kipo. But thank you for being yourself. Was one of the best people I was able to meet online for sure. Level one and the evil eye is available with level three. Uh, 16 power points collected for Archangel. What a what a messy game. Look his money once again. He has enough money now for the Fair Beast. Oh, the Barrage. We missed that. The Barrage was able to kill the Slaughterhouse, but not the production buildings because they are level 3. They don't die that fast anymore. Haradrim Palace is level 3 as well. I want to keep an eye on the Witch King, boys. I want to get them level 10. I mean, that's going to be kind of tough to do, but... And Spalindur is such a nice guy because he would not use for Gonzo and abuse his power without asking me for permission. 975, almost full command points available from Mustafa too. And actually Archangel is now dropping down to 550, what is going on? Why is he not using his power points? He has 17. Where is the Witch King? Did he lose the Witch King, maybe? The uh, Witch King is here, he's getting mounted on his fell beast, okay? You fool. Die now. Can't you see death? Oh, look at him, guys. Look at this design of the Witch King. Pew! One shot, almost the full battalion. I like that. Now Archangel is going... For oh, the Parage will now be used from the Grease player. Okay, okay. Should have, he should have taken down this uh, Slaughterhouse level 3, though. It's fine. Builds me an army worthy of Mordo. What, what are those? Oh, yeah, these are from the Morgul Blade. I was always wondering where are those whites coming all the time. But of course, oh, the Nazgul has been taken down from 
I think this one was from uh, from Archangel. Yeah, Archangel lost his Nazgul. But don't you worry, don't you worry, child. The Witch King. Oh, the Witch King is gonna take his revenge. Oh, sit down. Level 5 unlocked. I mean, yeah, level 5. And the next power spike is level 10, you know, like 5 levels away. And you will now see what I mean. Like, leveling up to level 4, level 5 is much, much easier than leveling up from level 5 to level 10. That's gonna be taking you ages, you know what I'm saying? To get to the level power spike. And also, this is kind of useless against units, I believe. So it's not the best best thing against units. It's only good in the late game against heroes. Target enemy special ability timers are reset to just use, you know? And there we go. That's a massive army. He has also Haradrim archers on the fields now. They are bullying the Witch King, but they are not dealing too much damage to him. Because there is only one single uh, battalion. How you met Balindru Shanks? I mean, he was watching my streams, uh, just like you guys. He was being active in Discord and stuff like that, in the Twitch streams. He was always around, was chatting with me. And I don't know how it came, then we actually kind of land up in the Discord voice chats with each other. And we start talking, you know, playing together, some League of Legends games, this and that. And all of a sudden, it became more regularly, and then we just start talking more and more often. That's how. Evil Eye was used. Oh, actually, Evil Eye was hurting the Witch King quite a lot. Oh, what? Boom! No orb can kill me. But they're all scared. This guy is hitting like a truck, my dude. Did he use heal? Oh yeah, he used heal from the spellbook. I was wondering, what, what, where is the sustain? But there are just too many units, man. Mouth of Sauron is actually hurting him big time. Level 7. He doesn't deal too much damage against heroes, though. The damage is only great. I mean, it's still good against heroes, too. But it's definitely mainly based on the on the enemy units, you know? Mordor got healed, yeah. Mordor has healed. Also, Isengard has healed from the spellbook. Oh. Okay. Shenanigans. Archangel. He might also go for the heal. He has 16 power points collected. 1,000 for Mustafa. And look at the money from Archangel. What, what is he saving for? I'm actually curious. Is Colum on? Yes, Colum is on. Oh, the Nazgul is getting knocked back on the ground. The Witch King is actually like, sit down, you servant of Morgoth. Look. <laughs> Let me move. Ten. Oh, he didn't knock him down this time. Okay. Nice. Oh my goodness, level almost 8. And this guy is level 9. I like that. I like that. Each is only a number, you know? I've met many people in my life who were over 40 years old, but their brain was kind of 4. And I've also met people, they were reasonable, they were... You know, you could talk to them. They were not childish. Depends on, on the person. Like, doesn't matter. Like, people, they are kind of grown up when they are 15. Some people are not grown up when they are 50, you know? So you can't uh, kind of say this and that. Each is only a number, in my opinion. Level 1 Witch King also now from Mustafa. So Witch King, the Witch King Clash. 18 power points collected for a Turkish player after the barrage. He has full command points, full CP means full resource income, especially with the Slaughterhouse level 3 and industry on it. And Archangel is actually having also a decent amount of command points available. He has collected nearly 10 power points because he was investing 10 of the power points for the heal. Which is going to delay his 25. But it's okay. Oh, look. What's going on here? What is this? Archangel. And the Witch King is gonna get mounted on his... Oh my goodness. You fool. The Witch King Slayer. One more hit. Oh, heal is on cooldown. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, the Witch King is still alive. I can't believe it. Run, 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 run. run. Oh, he might be evil. Oh my goodness. What is going on? The Witch King not even close. No witch king can kill me. Look, not even close, boys. Hide him somewhere. Put him in the corner or something. Put him here, next to the hobbits. I think you can, right? Because he can fly. Or that would be unexpected, dude. Yeah, I would just put him here, you know, in the corner. Hide. Imagine the hobbits, how scared they would be. Like, ah, we are running from the Nazgul and there comes witch king, you know? They would be kind of shitting in their pants. 
2 plus 1000 resources collected. Taiwan is level 2 for the Forge Blades eventually. Or Heavy Armor. Nope, that's not being the case. Level 3 is needed for the Fire Arrow upgrade. And there we go. That's a level 2 Troll Cage for the Drummer Trolls. And you can see, take a look into the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen, right? Mustafa is having definitely the most of the map. Mustafa is born and raised in Syria, but he's now living for many, many years in Turkey. It's like a refugee, you know? Refugee. It's like the peasants when they're running away from the war. That was Mustafa. Um, and he was always telling me that he's, he feels more like he's belonging to Turkey than to Syria. He was asking me to put the Turkish flag for him. And I was like, okay, you know what? If you want it, you will get it. Oh, what's going on? Some shenanigans. Morgul bleeds. Level 4. Mouth of Sauron also from Mustafa. He's gonna use the evil eye, the Clash of the Witch Kings. This one is from Archangel, by the way. This is from Mustafa. Mustafa's Witch King is only level 1, while this Witch King is level 9. But... There comes the big boy. Let's go. Witch King thinks... Witch Kings think they are powerful, but little they know, because here comes the big boy, guys. With the wings, he's flying inside the jeans. Ignite is gonna boost his damage by double his damage actually. Means 100% damage boost. And the Balrog of Morgoth is looking for a chance to show his quality by breathing fire on the buildings. And booyah. There we go. Pew. Nice. Oh my, what? He was one-shotting the level 3 Haradrim Palace with the fire whip. That's nuts, dude. That's nuts. Play. I believe I can fly. Boom. Time remaining is going down. He has to make something happen. The bait, you know, you need to always be active. Pew! Nice. One more level 3 slaughterhouse has been taken down. And that's the power of the 25 power points from the spellbook, you know? Like the chance of you to win the game eventually. Like they have such a huge impact. That's what I was trying to see. Because Archangel was going for a heal. If he wouldn't go for a heal, he would have his own Balrog summon by now. And maybe he could be dealing similar damage, similar damage to the economy into the production buildings of Mustafa himself. But now he lost every single production building, which means he is not able to recruit any units any soon. By a whip, maybe against a hero, but it's on cooldown. This hero needs to be careful. Witch King, you can't fight against Balrog. Trust me on that one. But I believe that's going to be GG, boys. As Archangel is down a lot, like he's... Still having 750 command points available though, because he was building multiple slaughterhouses next to each other, as you can see. But what's the matter if you have no production buildings, which is gonna give Mustafa now a huge chance to keep up the pressure all the time. And Mustafa has even collected 12 power points after the Balrog summon already. It's a level 4 Mouth of Sauron, level 10 is gonna be unlocking his descent, which is gonna make the enemy units fight against each other. Which also is actually pretty amazing ability, if you ask me, for a quiet cost efficient hero like Mouth of Sauron. Very, very impressive. Might be even better in many situations than the Hour of the Witch King from this guy. The only thing I would love to see in this game is this dude getting level 10. And I would love to see and show you guys at the same time the animation of the Hour of the Witch King, you know? Would be amazing. But he needs still full, full level for that, you know? Full level. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Ragnarok, by the way, guys. I, I wanted to stream Ragnarok today. Ragnarok versus Mission of X. And then also Sauron versus Best Friend. As well as Archangel against Mustafa. All these games needed to be streamed today. When I wouldn't fall asleep. Slaughterhouse is going down. Oh, the Witch King is getting bullied. Or the Nazgul is getting bullied, actually. He will be able to get away. Level 10 Nazgul. Oh, What? Did he lose his Witch King? No, he didn't. What's going on? Like, so many black... Oh, look, look, what is this? Auto attack. <laughs> Auto attack range. Kill him. Oh, half a level only, boys. But now he's low. Oh, heal is coming in clutch. Look at the damage. He's trying to make him level 10, I guess. Oh, quarter level away from getting level 10. Actually, Mustafa is feeding him big time now. 25 power points collected. Now is the time for Archangel to shine. Now is the time for the Archangel to shine. Because he has also now the chance to summon the big boy. 
the Balrog of Morgoth. Oh, there we go. And Barrage is also available, which can be used at the same time. And then, potentially, with this many heroes, you can even... Oh, the Witch King is getting away. Oh, okay. Nice burst damage. Almost 50% of health. I want to see that. I want to see the Barrage. I mean, the Fortress is protected. He has armor built into that, you know, as an upgrade. So it's not going to be taken down, but he might be able to destroy a lot from around the Fortress. The Witch King is coming in clutch also from Mustafa. This one is from Mustafa, by the way. Almost level 3. This Witch King is almost in nearly level 10. Come on now. Does he have heavy armor? Oh, level 10. Come on now. Level 10, ladies and gentlemen. Now we gotta keep an eye on this dude. If he's ever gonna use the... Uh, you know... The Hour of the Witch King, I don't know, go webcam? Dude, I'm literally looking like I'm a monkey, you know? I was not even washing my face. I was running it down to the PC to stream for you guys. I'm looking so done with my life, you know? If you would see me on the street like that, you would give me some money for free, you know what I'm saying? You would be like, oh my god, this guy has to be homeless, you know? Let's spot him to get some food or something. The Witch King? Oh, okay, so, but why is he holding that, you know? Just use it. Just use it, my dude. Oh my goodness, this, actually, this Witch King is, look at this. They, they have also heavy armor, right? Yeah, they have heavy armor, but they get still one shot and blown away. This Witch King is only level 3 for now, but it's okay. Um, Doesn't really matter, I think. 680, um health he's also going now for the eye of sauron which he needs to use to have vision you know you need vision or tainted land could be also used i think you can also summon the barrage without the vision but i believe for the but for the balrog summon you have to have vision what's going on doubt was used why oh enemy hordes and heroes in the target location suffer oh you make even heroes lose damage and armor and speed that's pretty effective then look at them you are getting bullied away this is from uh, Archangel, if I'm not mistaken. Pew! Sit down. Yeah, Archangel's Mouth of Sauron will be able to survive. Level 5. And the Balrog was kind of used defensively. Uh, he's running for his life. Is he fast enough to get away from the Nazgul, though? I think so. He's also healing up over time. The Wing has almost no cooldown, so you can keep flying all the time. Look at him, guys. Look at the shadow when he's flying. You see on the ground? That looks amazing. Did he get away with the... Yeah, he got it away. What is this Fiesta game, dude? I don't get it. <laughs> what a Fiesta game. Like, you know, like 1,000 years later. Maybe maybe Rain of Fire is going to be the difference. I don't know. But it was used. Industry is available. Pew! Level 3 Furnace or the... Not Furnace. The Siege Works got blown away. This is actually so effective against uh, building. Holy moly, man. That's crazy. Breath Fire, maybe? Do it. Just do it. Oh, Woo! nice. But Tavern is level 3. Orpid is not even getting one shot from level 2. What? I mean, his damage with the Breath Fire against buildings isn't the greatest. Especially our Orpid level 2. I was expecting it to get destroyed. But he's focusing down the resource buildings instead, which I can understand. The Orpid is going to be still taken down. I mean, the Balrog was still not bad. Like, he was able to kill the Nazgul, kill the Siege Wargs, kill the Slaughterhouse. So, pretty good. The Witch King is leading the army of Mordor to victory. Where is the other Witch King? The Hour of Witch King? I don't want to miss that. I want to see the animation if I can. The pressure is real. Is he going to ever use it though? Maybe use it on this uh, Mouth of Sauron or something. I don't know. There is only one single catapult. This needs ages to take down the fortress all alone. Until, uh, But he's building offensive siege works now. He want to win this game ASAP. Level 5, Doubt is available, and Eye of Sauron is also, Evil Eye is also available. In which we have seen deals a great amount of damage also to enemy heroes like Witch King. Oh, but it doesn't one-shot the catapult. And also catapults are able to level up in this game, you know? Corsairs, why Corsairs? Why not Easterlings? He has so many mounted heroes and horse, I think. Is Reign of Fire up from... What? Rena fires up from Archangel? And no. I mean, he was just using the Balrog. Like, of course, he's not having that many power points yet. What is going on here? 
Where, where, is the, where is the Witch King? Did he lose the Witch King? I don't know what's going on. It's a, it's a fiesta fight. There we go. That's the Witch King, level 10. Use your hour of the Witch King before you die. Come on now. I want to I wanna see that. I want to see that. Show me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The last skill of the Witch King is the hour of the Witch King. Target heroes in AoE if they have their special ability time or reset to 80% used. Enemy heroes around Witch King suffer minus 25% damage. And I think it's going to be useful because, like, there are so many heroes you can affect with that AoE. Effect means you can hit multiple units at the same time. So it could be nice. But he's not used. Oh, he's using it. Oh, what? Shenanigans. Did you guys see the animation? What did he say? I will break it? Don't hurt yourself, Witch King. But now everything is on cooldown. Like it's used right now, you know? So it's an effect against Gandalf. I will break you, okay? Bad power for level 10, yeah. G Witch King has always like shibi powers, you know, with level 10. But he's like uh, having much better stats, of course. Um... As like a melee hero, you see he's able to hit multiple units at the same time. He's hitting extremely hard while being extremely tanky. So it kind of makes sense. You can't compare which... Oh! What is this? Atomic bomb on your face, son. Nice. But Witch King is like sitting there and taking it like a boss. Not even the tower has been taken. Uh-oh. 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 I'm smelling disconnection. I'm smelling disconnection. Oh no! We have the red Alvin player Mustafa against the blue Mordor player Archangel. We have seen Mordor a lot actually in this series so far. We see two slaughterhouses coming up for the Mordor player on the other side. We also see him using the Eye of Sauron to scout the area from the Alvin player. You see Malon 3 into the second Malon 3. Maybe you need to use the eye, uh, the eye a bit, you know, later. Would be nice. The builder is like, don't watch me. And Mustafa is going once again for an economical start, you know? Three Malon 3s into the barracks. The eye will be able to see that. The great eye sees everything. Was he able to see the barracks though? He will be able to, yeah. That's the thing, you know, when you play in a one-on-one -on -one against Mordo in BFME 1, the first second you load into the game, they're gonna use the Eye of Sauron to see what's going on. Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse. We see four Slaughterhouses coming up for the Mordo player. He might rush the Nazgul. Slaughterhouse number five, number six. What is going on? Six Slaughterhouses. That's crazy. My weekend was kind of good. Um... I was, you know, going to shopping with my wife in the weekend, so it's gonna, it was fine for her. I need to also do my husband to do these, of course. To make her happy. Other than that, I was streaming quite a lot. I mean, I think in the last month, in the last 30 days, I was streaming almost every single day. I think only two or three days in total were not streamed. Other than that, I was streaming almost every single day. I missed streaming because I missed you guys, uh, since I couldn't stream in the... Vacation time. The builder is scouting. There is nothing to find. It's going to be a Nazgul rush. That's something we see more and more often. And archers? Is he gonna put them inside the jeans? No. These are Lorian archers. Yeah, he's gonna put them inside the jeans indeed. That's allowed by the way. I don't mind that. It's not against the rules. You can do that if you want. If you feel better this way, do it. Barracks number two. Pikeman next. And this guy is spamming slaughterhouses all game long. What is going on? Finally, Orc Pit. I think Nazgul is on his way. I will be used for the second time. <laughs> okay, Mustafa is playing so extremely passive that Mordor is not going to get punished for this kind of playstyle. Like, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven slaughterhouses in total, guys. Before the first Orc Pit. And the Nazgul is already on his on the field. I mean, with this much money, he might actually rush two more Nazguls, you know? 
it's very very likely gonna happen because he has only one orc pit and orcs are not very expensive units he's gonna creep the work layer at the bottom right side dealing a lot of damage to the work this nazgul is actually quite a quite strong man look at the graphics dude that's not bad for a game from 2004 he will be rich yeah he will be rich Pikeman now finally on the field and also archers, more archers. He's creeping at the same time with the second pikeman. Top left. Malon 3. Foresight is gonna be used to increase the vision and the range of this unit, and Nazgul is just gonna peel back. In our ranger, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Welcome to the streamer, dude. Okay, he's creeping this layer at the same time, top left. And look at this model player, he's expanding so much. Like he has so many slaughterhouses up on the field, that's crazy. And Paradisan, thanks for the follow as well. Appreciate you. Oh oh, the, wa the warriors are trampling those archers down. You need uh, archers here to defend. He's creeping, that's gonna be the second creep. The Nazgul is taking his time to actually try to deal economical damage. But he will be forced to peel back. The thing is, he's dealing a lot of damage, yes, but he's also extremely squishy, you know? You see the damage from the pikemen against him, even though he's level 2, and is debuffing them even with reducing their damage output by 25%, you know? Mustafa has no pikemen on the field yet. Archers are gonna try to deal with this pikemen. The creep is gonna be secured. What is he saving for? I'm curious. Like, he has so much money potentially. Archers, they are actually kind of expensive. They cost 300 each. But still, he might go for the second Nazgul very soon. Oh, he was even able to steal the money. That's... <laughs> lol. He get all the money from the creep and trampling down some, uh, some archers too. Nice one here from Archangel. Very well pleased. Nice, nice, nice. Archers are just chasing down the Spikeman, but they were able to get in safety. The Slaughterhouse here is going to be taken down. We have also Lorian Warriors now on the field. He demolishes that to get some money back. We have now an archer army, pretty much. Look, one, two, three, four archer battalions into two orcs. Five, six archers in total. What is that? I've never seen this many orc archers on the field at once. It's a huge orc archer army, you know? The builder is getting in safety. Trample damage is incoming. Oh my goodness, man. That's a lot of orc, orc archers. I see you. This is high tier leadership, by the way. It gives you armor and damage. So it's better than Warchant, in my opinion. It gives you less damage than, than Warchant. But it gives you armor. So I believe in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I against Warchant. I is going to be stronger. It's Fiesta time, isn't it? It's Fiesta time, isn't it? It's, it is actually indeed Fiesta time. Yes, welcome. Nice to see you in the chat, my dude. Look at the money from Mordo. Is he going for the Witch King already? Imagine Witch King that early into the game, you know? Oh my goodness, man. Actually, it was turning out so good for Archangel in this game. He was not getting punished for spamming this many slaughterhouses on the field. And he is up to 750 command points already. Like, this slaughterhouses are untouched. He's building a siege works now. To get some catapults on the field, I'm assuming. Or get Grant. I would love to see... I would love to show you guys the Grant. Grong is existing in this game, dude. Nazgul stay nearby to debuff them, maybe. Get dismounted, if you can. To make... To get a bit more tanky against archers. Against pikemen, I mean. Oh, trampling. Rallying call. I is gone. And Arvin is also on the field. Arvin is flat with level 5. Summons a flood. It will damage enemies and put out fires. Especially effective against Cav. Bonus against Black Riders. And she's leveling up like crazy. She has also leadership here. The armor inspiring leadership, which means only armor, no damage, but also increased combat experience. An Elven player was able to win this fight, no problemo. Siege works level 2 is incoming, you see Grunt, 7,500 resources, but it is worth it, trust me on that one. Hitting like a truck, and being tanky as a truck too, at the same time. Grunt, 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 Grunt. Look, requires level 3 siege works, used to break down gates. Like, there are no gates, but you can break down the enemy buildings instead. Catapults on their way. Yeah, but it's worth it, you know? It's like the ultimate siege weapon. 
Three Orc Pits, no other production building, no Corsairs, no Haradrims, no Easterlings, nothing like that. And only one single hero. He's going for the Catapults, though. I mean, the level 3 is going to cost you 500. And then saving up to 7,500 is actually quite expensive. The second Nazgul is now on the field. The first one is going to be able to destroy this Malone 3 in the middle of the map. The tower has been taken down. Lancers now from Elven player Mustafa. Abusing the fact that... You know, more there's no pikemen around. No, not a single pikeman. Fiesta. I've never seen Grant. Grant is very, very nice. But you will also not see him in many games, you know? Like, you will see him maybe once out of 100 games or something. Because maybe in 2v2 is a bit more likely. Oh, be careful with the Nazgul. He's microing actually quite nice. Archangel doing a phenomenal job in the game number 3 against the Elven player, Mustafa. Elves are forced to disengage as they are getting out spammed big time. Where is Arvin with Minitor? Arvin is here trying to destroy slowly but surely the slaughterhouse. She's gonna hit level 5 eventually very soon. That's gonna unlock the flood. I would love to see the flood damage against the Nazgul's. But it's hard to hit, you know? Since they are mobile, they can always kill back. Mordor was able to win. Barricade summon defensively. And there is a third Nazgul, guys. So we have three Nazgul's now. All the cheap and cost efficient heroes are on the field. Arvin is basically almost level 5, trampled down a bit, but she's being chased down and hunted down by three or two Nazgul's at the same time. The third one is gonna also join the party. Arvin? Arvin, what you doing, Arvin? It's a 3v1 situation. You want him? Come and claim him. But you have no flat yet. Imagine getting flat and one shotting this Nazgul's at the same time. That would be kinda like in the films, you know? Wash the evil away from this land. 1.09 version 2.0. That's the patch they are using for this tournament. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, where is your husband to, to revenge you? Arvin. She's gone. She's gone. No flood. Tom Bombadil summon will be used defensively. The siege has begun already. What is going on? Like orcs everywhere. Ain't moot now, but he has no money. Tom Bombadil was using the Sonic song. He's strong, but is he strong enough? No Pikeman, no problem for the Nazgûls. Almost level 6. There we go. Morgul Blade. I'm actually curious if you can also Morgul Blade the Tom Bombadil and cripple him down this way. It would be nice if you could. Because he's also like a hero, right? So, should work like that, I believe. Catapult has been taken down. Look at the Barricade damage, dude. That's crazy damage from Barricade. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Two Nazgûls. Going to the north side. Archer is still... I mean, I think the Alvin player is still kind of in the game, but he's down a lot. Like, wait, look at the money from Mordor. Do you see that? Come on now. Archangel gets Grunt on the field. 15 power points collected already. The build has been taken down too. Almost 10 power points collected after Tom Bombadil summon. Nazgûs are doing a phenomenal job in this game number 3. The first end is going to be a fat one. Look at him, guys. He was not going to the gym for a long time. It's like, I, I am Groot, you know? You. I am Groot. Arvin almost level 5. She's we back on the business. We have some peasants now coming from the inn also Most at the bottom left. Most must be when he at Gob Farms or DRW Farms like Grow for the Army Die if I took it out. Mouth of Sauron must be, must to, must to be when he attack. Goblin Farms and Dwarf Farms like Lorfindel, Army Die... If I look it out. What? The Nazgul doesn't care about his peasants. Look, the, the peasants are trying hard. Take this, girl. Take this, grandpa. Take this, young brat. Oh my goodness, man. I'm, I'm expecting a Witch King soon, guys. He has so much money now. That's crazy. Arvin is desperately trying to get level 5. Level almost 5. Come on, trample. There, he has no pikemen. Just spam Ar just spam calf, you know? Spam calf, spam calf, spam calf. Okay. Oh, the end from downtown. Look at the range, my dude. That's a long range. Look at the travel time. Watch this video in like 0 0.25 speed, you know? You see the rock flying in the mid-air. Boom. One more hit and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be taken down. The thing is, this game isn't over yet, but maybe... 
Maybe Witch King can make something happen. The model has not a huge advantage. I mean, he's leading, of course, but it's not like it's over, you know what I'm saying? Like, but he is available once again. He has almost 18 power points collected. Archer is for defense, but there are just too many orcs to deal with. And Malone trees are not this are not the tankiest buildings in the game. They are one of the squishiest ones. This is going down. Level 5 unlocked for Arvin. I want I would love to see the flat damage against the Nazgûls. And they are grouped like that. I think the flat can deal devastating amount of damage. We will see about that though. We will see. Eye is available. Barricade is available. He's going for the worm. Alright. Worm for eco damage. Destroying Malon trees or even the end mood. He has eye on the level 2 Malon tree. It's still very squishy. A level 1 Malon tree. A level 2 Malon tree is still way squishier than a level 1 mineshaft. The worm will be used defensively though. And this one has also no reposition, right? No? But I think when you right click, you can always... No? Is the worm doomed like that? Nah, you can. When you right click, you will automatically move. Alright. Oh, no. Arvin is getting knocked on the ground. How much damage against Arvin? Oh! What? What? I mean, what the heck was that, dude? That's crazy, man. What? What? She was 100 to 0 with a one single attack? Rock is like you go to work. Her job's okay. You got nice boss, breaks, decent pay, benefits. Then T. Hey assign you to new office across town. At nice office boss shit. Pay Suk. All co worker insult you and spill coffee on you. And you go home and wife divorce you. Guys, you need to stop using the drugs you are using all the time, you know? It's not good for your health, my dude. <laughs> Alright, uh, this is going down as well. Oh, look at the crossfire from both the sides. Pew, 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 pew. Like... Okay. What is going on? This is going down, definitely. He also has to take down this one. How many power points? Eagle summon was used. Chasing down the Nazgûls, but two of them will be able to survive. The Alvin player is still 675 command points available, though. Kill this catapult already, man. Doesn't hurt. Like, one catapult needs ages to destroy the fortress. But seriously, I'm surprised that... Uh, oh, he missed. Oh, he hit his own... What? He hit his... He missed, and he hit his own Lancer with the end. Oh, my goodness. Um, but seriously, I was surprised about the one shot, dude. Like, that the worm is able to one shot Arvin like that. To be honest, I didn't see that coming. Okay, side by side, Nazgûls are taking down the level 2 Malone 3. That's gonna. It means minus 75 command points. For the Elven players, down to 575. Mordor has Siege Forks. He's spamming catapults all the time on the field. And once again, remember they are level up, leveling up also from level 1 until level 10. But no stronger units all game long. Like, no Corsairs, no Haradrim Lancers. With Legolas. Oh, oh, Hawk Strike. Do it. Pew. What? Oh, he... What did he hit? What? Huh? Guys. Did you guys see where the Hawk Strike went? Because this this guy didn't receive any damage. Out of... What? There is a, there is a max range for this one? Dudes, I don't even know 5% of this game yet. It's like Cripple. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that it can be missed. You know what I'm saying? Innocent Russian. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. The Legolas from the Mirkwood Elves. Turning into the white from the Mirkwood Elves. That's Legolas when he's dead, boys. Do you see his face? Legolas can be OP against Mordor. Five seconds later, we see Legolas dying. Almost seven, almost 16 power points. Fiesta. I mean, this series has been so far crazy Fiesta games. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy shenanigans and stuff like that. Uh, 16 power points almost collected. 17 power we points collected after. And the Eagle Alliance. I believe the Sunflare can also be not bad against Mordor. I believe this has like a one-shot potential against the Black Riders. And you can potentially I kill them all at the same time. The West. 
Arwen is back on the field. After the worm was bullying her to death, back into the fortress. Use the flat. Use the flat. But again, you know, the Nazgûls, they need to be kind of brain dead, you know? For you for you to hit the flat. You can always be back. Kitty, thanks for the 33 bitty boom. Thank you so much for the for the support. Appreciate that. 33? Thank you, thank you. Flat? I mean, okay, Arvin is definitely not OP in this one, guys, okay? Arvin is definitely not OP in this game because the flat was healing the siege weapons from his opponent. She healed the catapult to full HP. Nice. This Arvin is like having not the best day of your life, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, Arvin is having struggle big time. Arvin is struggling big time. But actually, this game is still not, still not over. Um, and, oh, I think it back. The flat is actually reloading quite fast, you know? The goddess is back on the field too. Actually, he doesn't hurt this Nazgul too much too, to be honest, you know? He has to be careful. I believe this Nazgul has the potential to 1v1 him with the Morgul Blade. You are crippled down. 24 power points collected. Arvin is almost back, getting the flat back on the on the field. Nazgul's level five, level six. They have ends. Uh, still, the end mode is still up on the field. Maybe three build could be nice. Haldir is also now joining the field as the third hero from the Alvin player. Okay, Arvin got some stress there yeah, with Aragorn over Eowyn. She's kind of confused. 24 power points collected after the Eagle Summon. Only one power open away. Uh, Skyzox06, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Hey, old player here. Nice to see that game is still going. I've now seen two we matches. Aren't upgrades a thing anymore? Uh, they are in BFME 2. Not very, uh, not as important as they are in BFME 1. I don't know about which game you played. If you played BFME 2 or uh, BFME 1 before. But in BFME 1, the upgrades are still very, very important. In this game, not very important. It's still important in the later stages of the game to make your units a bit stronger. But not very efficient to rush, you know. The Nazgul. The flat is still on cooldown. Be careful. The Ent is trampling them down now. You need to kill this Siege Warwick, but the Archers are not dealing too much damage to it, as you can see and tell. Oh, not... I mean, he will not be able to lose in this. To kill this, I guess, right? No, no, no. But decent amount of damage dealt. 25 power points collected. Maybe if he can combine it with his 25, because he's only one power point away. 25 is unlocked. 26 power points now. What is Haldir doing? Haldir is lost. Haldir lost his weight. Haldir is like. Haldir is like, I, I don't want to be in this world anymore. And Haldir is running it down, ladies and gentlemen, and dying. But look at this clump, my friends. Flood! What a beautiful, juicy flood! And he even killed the Nazgul's. Almost. Yeah, that was a nice flood, dude. There was phenomenal amount of damage dealt there. Beautiful flat. He killed all the production buildings and the siege works at the same time, my dude. Pretty, pretty nice. Oh, look, run, Arvin, run. When you see the worm, Arvin, we gotta run, you know, you gotta run, Arvin. The worm is on the hunt. <laughs> he is looking for the... F <laughs> he wanted a rematch, you know? He's like looking for the round two. That was a fantastic flat, definitely. One of the best flats. But also kind of clumped up like that. It's bad for the late game, you know? The Worm. The biggest enemy from Arvin. Oh, nice Hulk Strike against Archers. Nice. Level 2. Arvin is healing up over time. But the thing is, the Rain of Fire calls down a hail of Molten Rock that will damage enemies or allies units on select area. It's coming. Boom! On your face, son. But the fortress in the barracks is still not going down. Level 1 barracks survived that. And also Arvin got one. Arvin is like so squishy. Arvin is like getting bullied all the time. Oh, 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 oh. You gotta kill this catapult as soon as possible. Otherwise, you are gonna be losing the game. I think it's... Oh, he missed. The catas can be missed in this game, you know? Oh, the Nazgul, one of them has been taken down. Oh. Miss. Oh, he missed again. No way. He missed again. But this Mustafa is so lucky. He was missing all the shots. He missed again? Oh my, he missed like five shots in a row, my friend. No way. And he lost a Nazgul. 
like he missed almost like like 10 percent accuracy by the way like every 10 shot is able to hit the fortress but there is an invisible thing yeah i mean he was potentially targeting the fortress right and he missed it i guess okay not and that's unlucky dude like not being able to take down the the fortress there was kind of crazy man that was i mean it's more realistic though that you are not able to hit every shot on the enemy face it's kind of makes makes kind of sense i like it this way it's making it more realistic you know what i'm saying like even ends could be miss you know missing like okay this nazgul is definitely dead maybe the second one too now this one is still full hp he's almost level 10 too okay Two power points collected. And what a turnaround. Like, look, look at the... You see the units from Mordor? He was just rebuying the production buildings, guys. The flat was messing him up big time, you know? No more catapults. Nothing like that. He's down a lot. And I didn't expect such an outcome of this game number three. It was looking so good for Mordor. What happened? What happened? Fiesta happened. That's for sure. Arvin is one, once again on the field. She is getting killed from everything today, you know? The, the Nazguls are bullying her. The worm is one shooting her. Man, you're expensive like Argon Gandalf Aomerai when I didn't see anyone make them in 1v1 pro games. Man, heroes expensive like Aragon Gandalf Aomer Eowyn. Eomer Eowyn are not expensive, dude. We, I, I mean, I don't know which, which game you're talking about. In BFME 2, yeah? I have not seen this heroes too, too, but I've also not seen many, many men of the West factions yet. But in Rise of the Witch King, I believe we have seen in every single game, Man of the in Man, every single Man of the West game, we have seen Elmia. E every game. Nazgul's level nine. The Witch King, looking looking flying, guys. You see the you see the head from Witch King when he is or the the fell beast. Okay. Oh, oh. He missed again the whole strike. Arvin is on the hand. Arvin is actually not tired of dying yet, you know? She's dying all the time, but yet she's trying again and again and again. Getting dismounted with the big boy. Morgul Blades. Oh, oh, don't clamp like that against Witch King. I'm telling you, don't clamp like... Oh, flat, 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 flat. Oh, the Witch King, oh my goodness. Flat, 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 flat. Oh. Arvin taking a revenge getting knocked back from something what is going on the Nazgul one of them is gonna die to Legolas right yeah Legol Legolas is killer nice and in the meantime the Witch King is getting in safety okay Flat was not dealing as much damage as I was originally expecting it but it's fine it was knocking them on the ground dealing great amount of damage regardless and actually giving it a chance to save Arvin Arvin I believe was even able to survive yeah Arvin is able to survive Almost level 7. And now the siege has begun. The ends, he has armor on the fortress, you know? You see? The siege weapons are not that effective here. Against the fortress, at least. You need multiple siege weapons. Look how long it takes. Like, these two ends would kill in Rise of the Witch King the fortress in like 20 seconds, you know? 15 seconds. But here it's gonna take some more time. The Witch King is healing up over time. Maybe he might go for the Gorgoros by a fireball once again. If he has the money, of course. Does he have the money? The answer is no, he doesn't have the money. Corsairs are trying to deal some economical damage. The Malone tree is going to get demolished. Entmood, he never also was recruiting the tree beard. Fortress flat. What? No, it was not the fortress flat. Oh. Oh, Witch King is taking down the ends. That's good. What, what is Legolas doing? Legolas? Legolas. Oh, actually, Hulk Strike is hitting hard, my dude. Against the level almost 7 Nazgul. Witch King against Legolas. Oh, actually, Witch King hurts. Look how long it takes. There is only one end, so he has some time. He has some time. Nine power points collected. Arvin is running for her life. I think she's going to be able to get away. What can you do with the 9? You can go for the Tainted Land, I believe, but you have no army, that's the problem, you know? And you have no army that can face this army. Like, he has Hi, two heroes. in my heroes. opinion, heroes must be less cheaper, not all heroes. Some of them must be cheaper in 20%, like Dragon Lord 4K is good. We don't see him in 1v1, and 
I think if you make the gameplay depend on heroes more is better is make the game more fun something like Dota 2 or LOL 40% heroes 60% army new thing in the game I hate the gods gameplay all but spam units and lose them you win in that way but no fun a new gameplay must be if you don't make this woman just talked without oh my this worm is I, I'm in love with this worm guys the worm is literally MVP he's killing everything in one single shot my dude look at the ants look look run run you ant Oh, oh, I want to see the worm damage also against Elrond. Show me, show me, show me. This worm is MVP, my dude. Come on now, this worm is crazy. It's like next level. It's like a hero, killer, slayer, everything. That's a crazy thing. The worm is definitely popping off. And that's what I'm trying to say, you know. You see what happened, like, the, the end has been taken down, the Elrond is gone, that's a lot of money. Mustafa was just losing in the last 20 seconds, so... If he keeps doing that all the time... <laughs> Arvin! <laughs> Arvin! No way, Arvin! The Worm, dude. The, the Worm feels like a 25 power point summon, not gonna lie. Level 4, Witch King, 11 power points collected. We have uh, 6 power points collected after Eagles, Flat, Arrow Volley, Mist, Tom Bomber Deal, Foresight, and Rallying Call. 935 still for Elves. What is it? And 725. What is it? That's a Witch King, my dude. 725 for uh, Mordor. He also has now the Gorgoros Pyre Fireball, guys. The animation looks also beautiful. You see the Great Eye of Sauron on top of the Fortress. You see this? It's gonna be red, and then you will see this hopefully later on. He might need to use that. I believe it's gonna be also giving you the chance to one-shot the ends for some more defense. He's also building now some body kit expansion around the fortress. Double tavern. He was never ever getting Easter links on the field all game long. No Haradrim arches either. <laughs> In this moment, the worm feels like he could beat the Balrog too. I don't know, man. The worm is feeling extremely strong though. Also against heroes. It's good for a change that you have now some potential to also use it other than only just killing buildings, you know what I'm saying? Glorfindel now, it's a hero party. Elrond is back on the field, level 4. Has Atelas, has Foresight, has also the leadership, which is a high tier leadership. Which means, for example, it's able to stack with the leadership of, for example, Arvin, you know, or or uh, from Hylgir when he's level 4. So you can make your units really, really strong. Maybe upgrades could be nice. Maybe get some silver tone arrows or you know heavy armor or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Would be nice. Legolas is also level five. Knife fighter, plus 35 percent armor. Peasants are running it down. 12 power points collected. I mean, are we gonna able be able to see potentially also something like a like a Balrog? You know, Balrog Rain of Fire, and then also potentially Flat and the Starlight, the Sun Flare. I mean. 12 power points collected. The flat is almost back up though. So flat was used way before the rain of fire. Keep that in mind. Actually, looks like rain of fire is going to be able to reload a bit faster. And once again, he's clamping his production buildings. Do you see that? Flats here can actually kill one shot everything once again. Okay. So worm is on cooldown. Flat is almost back up. And I believe if you can combine the flat with the eagle summon, and you have like one end, this end, dude, this end is like very fat. Look at him. This end. Didn't go for it, didn't go to the gym for a long time. Okay, so mist is available, arrow volley is available. We will see. Witch King. And don't send the end out like that, dude, without protection. Witch King hurts, man. I like Witch King here. Witch King is so much more impactful. I like Witch King. That's what it's supposed we to be. Dude, when you invest 5,000 into a hero, that's what you need to get in your, in return, you know? I love this Witch King, you know? That's what I was trying to say all the time. When you ever invest this much money into a hero, you need to feel the difference. You know what I'm saying? Flag is almost back up. 1,000 command point, uh, 1,000 resources only for else. And if he loses the fight... And all the heroes, I mean, he has now Glorfindel, Elrond, Hyldir, Legolas, and Arwen. If he loses all these Elvin heroes, dude, he might actually lose the game after that, you know? Advance. The end has been taken down. Looks like meets back on the menu, boys. Witch King is almost level 5. Has Screech now. 
I believe the Alvin player will also have fear resistant. I don't know if Elrond offers you also lead, uh, fear resistant. Let me check. Um, nope, that's not the case. I don't know. We will see about that. But yes, Gorgoroth's Fire Fireball. Keep that in mind, please. Uh, I would not use it, though, in a situation like that. Maybe save it for the ends. Or for Tree Beard. Who has also no protection. Corsairs. And nice. I mean, Ectil uh, not Ectilion. I always... Ectilion and Archangel, they are both very, very old. Oh, the Flood! Beautiful Flood one more time. He knows the Fortress is long. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about. The Reign of Fire will be used on top of the enemy units. He was almost... Oh, he killed all the heroes, my dude. He killed all the heroes, my friend. And the Eagles are dealing no damage to the Fortress too. Flood, maybe? But Flood doesn't even deal damage. Yeah, Arvin is gone. Turning into the Vite. Oh, I think the Fortress is going down anyway, right? Yeah, it's going down. It's going down. Actually, the Fortress has been taken down. Arrow Volley to save Treebeard from the Corsairs. Fireball was not even used. And on top of that, the Mortal player was forced to use the Reign of Fire defensively. And he has not enough money to rebuy the Fortress, which has a crazy amount of impact in the lead game. This body kit is actually hitting like a truck. Yeah, but it's gonna be taken down anyway. Look, they are scared from Treebeard, you know? They don't hurt Treebeard at all, these Corsairs. And one more hit, and the Slaughterhouse level 3 is going down. Which means 100 less command points for Mordor and way less resource in camp. 550 now, only. Witch King can always get mounted, but it's gonna make him extremely squishy against archers. He's also fast on foot, I like that. Hydra was able to survive. No Mirk Woods, though. No, he has only one Mirk Wood. Okay, I take it back. And no upgrades all game long. Does he have a builder? Uh, actually, that's a very smart question. Let me check. I, I don't think so. That, there, he has a builder. He has a builder. He's building multiple Haradrim palaces now, all of a sudden. Why do you screech all the time? This guy is always... Oh, Gollum is also... Kill, kill, kill Gollum and get the one ring, you know? And then get Galadriel on the field. I would love to see that, dude. Actually, Mordor is still doing a good job, but the problem is he has not enough money, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the problem. Like, when he's trying to save money, that means he can't recruit units, and he will be either out of units or out of money all the time. And once again, in the lead game, the power points from the spell, but from any faction, having a huge impact. And the thing is, that during all this time, the power points are not reloading anymore. With that, I mean, like, the flood from the Alvin player is gonna be up faster. And what a, what a back and forth game. The fortress was almost getting one-shotted. The catapults missed many, many shots on the fortress, which caused the fortress to be protected. And then the fight on the on the on the fortress from the model player, back and forth, back and forth. This game could go the other way very, very easily, you know. Okay. I'm actually curious if this Legolas or something like that can actually kill this. You see, they are not hurting him, dude. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> oh, he's using foresight. Look, look his tankiness. He's not getting knocked back from the... 12,000 health. Like, three heroes are shooting him down. But he doesn't care, boys. He doesn't care, boys. Oh, level four. Nazgul's are forced to disengage. Witch King 2. Corsairs are actually winning this fight for the model player. But the heroes are, of course, the real threat. More than money, almost 2,000. 5,000 is needed for the fortress, of course. And he's still more than 3,000 away from this. In the meantime, the siege from the bottom left side. Nice camouflage on the end. He's seeing next to the tree. And now this end has also protection of the Mirkwood archers around them. He doesn't give up, of course. I mean, it's a it's a single elimination tournament, right? So if you, if you lose, you're out. Now he has 25 power points collected, but what's the matter? If you can't use them, you know? That's why Fortress is so impactful. Oh. Oh, oh. Heal. Oh, nice speed. Legolas. Hulk strike, maybe? Do it. Oh, not even close, baby. Come on now. Not even close. Run, you fool. He's gonna get in safety, though. This Witch King is so tanky. I like that. 7,000. Oh, arrow volley? 
Oh, he was predicting the movement of the <laughs> Witch King, but he was guessing wrong. And the Witch King is gonna get in safety. Yeah, the Alvin player has now 22 power points collected anyway. He might go for the Sun Flayer soon. And the Whirlwind is also available for this dude. Restoration with level 10, heals 20% health points of the nearby allies and fully refreshes their special ability timers. The Whirlwind is gonna be used to knock them in the air. Elrond is also kinda tough. He has also Atelas for the worst case scenario to not only heal himself, but also to uh, the nearby allied heroes around him. I did this level 4, has leadership, level almost 7 Legolas, level 10 is gonna unlock the arrow wind. This is something uh, which is being unlocked in BFME 1 when you are level 7. I, I don't know man, this game feels kinda very very strange to me, because the catapults missed the fortress many many times, it's, you know, Mordor could have taken it down. Okay, 3 we are chill man, why are you screaming like that? 25 power points almost collected, the heroes are... Holding themselves, getting more and more EXP. Knife Fighter Legolas. Looks stylish, if you ask me. Look, he has two knives in his hands, one knife in each hand. And also turning reds like that. Level 8. Witch King is on the hand. <laughs> Witch King is like, come here. <laughs> no, I'm not coming. Elrond is actually fast. He's Agent Smith, you know? The thing is, when you kill uh, Elrond, he's gonna just respawn. And if he puts the hand inside you, he will be duplicating himself. So be careful against Agent Smith, Blunt. my friends. The fortress is in a safe spot. Mist is available and Archangel is not gonna say a single word and leave the game. GG well played. We have the red Isengard player Mustafa on the left side against the blue Dwarven player Archangel on the right side. On the beautiful map Fort of Brunnen looks like that. We have seen this many many times in other tournament games as well. And Dwarves. For the first time of the day. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, so early barracks coming up for the dwarves actually. On the other side we see two furnaces into the third furnace, I'm assuming. I like the disabling of the fortress floors. I think that makes it more clean, you know what I'm saying? Like the fortress floors from the evil factions are looking pretty much the same way all the time. So Isengard, Goblins and Mordor, they are always looking identical furnace number four so it's an economical stat once again from um, mustafa but that's gonna hurt i believe even though i'm assuming that archangel is planning to creep the trolley at the top right side with the pikeman which is gonna give him the chance to capture this in right after to recruit some hobbits from the shire four furnaces into the uruk pit or work pit that's the question it's going to be the work pit but he might build even the Uruk Pit at the same time with this much resource income. And the plan is simple, we have seen this many many times, you know, to use the war Riders for harassment and then use crossbowmen and other infantry units for defense most of the time. Okay, so Rallying Call has been used. Trolls are a bit tough in this one. Rallying Call here gives you also combat experience, but does not give you armor, so keep that please in mind. So it's a bit less effective, but it's still the best choice from Dwarves, because the other two choices you have are either heal or the rebuild. So with Dwarves, you will always see Rallying Call in, you know, most of the cases. Okay, almost level 3. He was not even capturing this in yet, for whatever reason. It looks like he wanna lead to the other creep, potentially. He's already scouting this area with the builder. And that's gonna get those pikemen level 3. He was also building a mineshaft, or he's building a mineshaft offensively now to the Isengard base. Urukai are on their way, and war riders as well. One single mineshaft around the fortress. Guys, don't be toxic to each other, guys. Come on now, please. I mean, it's fine, you know. Some people prefer BFME 2, some people prefer Rise of the Witch King. Everybody is different. And just because somebody is different than you, you have no rights to flame him. So we are not tolerating this kind of stuff, please. Just be nice to each other, enjoy. When you want to discuss, discuss on a, on a high IQ level, you know? This game is bad, I, this game sucks. It's not very smart. Okay, creep secured, level 3 unlocked, almost level 4 actually. Remember in BFME 2 and 
there are a few things I like in BFME2 personally a bit more. And this, for example, one of the one of the main things is that your units are able to hit level 10. You know, that's I think very nice because that's gonna kind of encourage you to keep your units protected. Especially those guardians, they get so much benefit of that. This interaction with the levels is very smart. Like that you get a movement speed boost, level 3, level 5, level 7, level 10. It's gonna encourage you once again to keep your units alive all the time. Okay, the mineshaft is gonna be eventually taken down. The Urukai are hitting like a truck. But remember, the mineshaft is also the hardest or the tankiest resource building in the game. But it's not tanky enough against clumped Urukai. It means the dwarves can't get any more reinforcements on the field anymore. The keypads are gunners. That means Rallying Call is not gonna be able to get shut down. He might use Rallying Call now on these Guardian units or pikemen for a damage boost. But keep in mind that in this kind of situations, it would be even better if you have armor. Dwarven weakness, once again, is the lack of mobility. So you are not able to move as fast as you need to move in order to deal the damage you are looking for. And with that being said, Isengard now has the chance to kite all the time, you know? And of course, Gimli is right. These are Urukai, the trample is incoming from the backline, and Mustafa will be able to defend himself. Okay, nice one, nice one. But during all this time, we have Gloin on the field, guys. And you will see, from one war player all alone, he's gonna hit level 4. From level 1 to level 4, and it's also something I like a lot, because some heroes, they have not enough impact once they are level 1, you know? And you having the chance to level them up from level 1 to level 4 a bit easier, is gonna encourage you also to recruit the expensive heroes like Kanda, for example. Oh, never mind, level 3.5. But it's still very close. From one work layer only, he almost get the shake foundation unlocked, you know? Very, very strong. Bluen is also tough, very tanky. Work riders. Five power points collected, 400 command points available for Archangel. Pikes are on their way. On the other side, we have 450 command points available for Isengard. After Kribin, he was also able to collect five power points and he was also just able to kill one of the builders from dwarves. Does he have units inside the jeans? Yeah, he has two guardians inside the mineshaft. Mustafa is expanding very nicely. Kribin is available for the big fight. Okay, in the meantime, uh, Forge Works is building up now for dwarves. For some battle wagon sport, I'm assuming. Work that is two of them, three of them. Urukai, crossbow man. He has so many units on the fields now. You know what he can always do? He can also go for the Warchan himself. Because Warchan, if I'm not mistaken, is able to stack um, with the whole ability. So we can make your Warch Riders actually quite strong with that, you know? We have Guardians, Pikes. Oh, but be careful with the Pikes. Oh my goodness, man. He's taking so much. Oh my, one shot it. Oh, he was using aggressive stance too. That's bad. Oh my, nice damage dealt definitely here from Mustafa. Very well done. Whole ability combined with the Kribin to make them lose 25% of their armor. And remember, they were also using aggressive stance, which means less armor. So they were quite weak and the trample was able to one-shot the entire Guardian army. Only a couple of them were able to survive and one pikeman and that's it. This mineshaft is going down. Where is Glowing when we need him? Uh, where is Klein actually? I'm curious. Did he lose Klein? What? No, he Klein is here. Use, use the slap shot, slap attack. He missed it, of course. Shake, shake foundation is available. The pikes are running wild. They can't do much. Lurz is on the hands. Looks like Dwarven meat is back on the menu, boys. Isengard will be easily able to defend himself and building up the second Uruk pit at the same time. The furnace is getting bullied. Nine power points almost collected. Pikes, oh nice one here. He killed so many warp riders now. And that's the power of dwarves, you know. You can always Fight keep one pikeman. On menu, <laughs> you can also keep always one pikeman inside the mineshaft and use them whenever you need to defend yourself against warp riders. Nine power points almost collected for the Isengard player. 500 command points available. On the other side, dwarves have 450 and nearly eight power points collected. The battle wagons on the fields now. That's gonna force Mustafa to get some pikemen, because if he doesn't, this crossbowmen are gonna get trampled down in no time. 
Guardians, don't use aggressive stance. Use hold ground stance when you get trampled because you will get one shotted. A bit too late. Battle Wagon has to come now. There we go. Nice. That's nice. That's gonna be nice now. Watch this. Devastation stuns, by the way, in this game. Devastation stuns. These are instantly turned into resources. Stuns every unit in target area for a short duration. And Lourdes was able to kill him. Devastation is so much more powerful in this one. I like that. I like that. Okay, so two power points almost collected. After the Devastation already, he was able to win this fight big time. The Battle Wagon is quite expensive, you know? When you lose them like that, you lose 500. That's a lot of cash. Almost 10 power points collected for Dwarves. He has to expand a bit more. Potential spots around the bottom left side. But he's not expanding nearly as much as he could and as he should. Also, Siege Hammers can be only purchased from the Forge Works here yeah? and not from the Barracks. Also, Banner can be purchased from the Barracks. Okay, War Riders are healing up. I think he has the House of Healing. You see this blue animation that's upgrade on the Fortress that makes the... It's, it's like a well, you know, for the evil faction. And also evil factions in this game have sustain unlike they won't have in BFME 1 or in the Rise of the Witch King. Nine power points collected. Berserk is now, that's nice. Lourdes is level four, level five is gonna, is gonna unlock his leadership, which is damage leadership. Okay. Oh, he was using the oil bottle before getting taken down. You see, it deals damage over time, they fire on the ground, but only for a short duration. And once again, Ectilion, uh, not Ectilion, sorry, Archangel keeps losing those uh, battle wagons one by one all the time, which is gonna be kind of hurting you a lot in the in the long terms. You know, you lose so much values, you lose much many of that. And remember, in this uh, in BFME 2, King Brain doesn't exist, so you have no King Brain. You have only Dean, Glyn, Gimli. That's it. Uh, 1.09 version 2, Richie. 450 command points available for dwarves only against 700. It's a huge difference and also power point advantage for Mustafa. And remember Mustafa, if Mustafa wins that game, uh, Ictil uh, not Ictilion, one, I mean, this, my brain is lagging today. Archangel is going to get defeated and Mustafa is going to be able to move on to the quarterfinals. Creeping the trolley at the same time at the bottom left side. Sharku is also on the field. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Shanks loves me, that's why. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's a brand new patch, you know? I mean, I think that patch got released like a year ago. And they're also on... They're already working on the version 3 for BFME 2 patch 1.09. We are using the version 2. But I believe sooner or later they're gonna also release the version 3. The, good, the thing is, like, for example, the, the, the makers of the patch, like Ectelion, they are also expert level players. They, they know a lot of this game, and then they also involve, like, Sauron and everybody else into the patch making. So the best players, they know what's going on when it comes to make the balance of the patch. There are a few things, of course, you need to get used to, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm saying, like, you can't really compare BFME 2 to Rise of the Witch King. Because there are too many differences, like, you shouldn't compare. Like, it's a full different game, in my opinion. Like, there is nothing similar anymore. Only the units are looking the same, but that's pretty much it. Like, every stand, every leadership, every buff, every unit, every hero, every power point from the spell, but everything is different. Uh, Glyne, level 6, level 10, unlocks the Shatterhammer, and that's the counter-attack now with the Hobbit Summon. The Hobbits are going to war! Firecracker. Hero can throw a small firecracker. Special bonus against Shilop. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, I would like to see that against Shilop maybe in one game. But we need to see goblins. Hobbits. There will almost three furnace. It's going down for sure. Shake Foundation is available, keep that in mind. I want to see the uh, damage. Boom! One shot! Glyne, the destroyer of the buildings. Glyne is a siege machine, guys. 
He's, he's famous for that, you know what I'm saying? He's like a siege hero. Who needs siege weapons in 2021 when you have <laughs> Gloin on your side? Ah, oh, Frodo Baggins going down. Rallying Cole. And actually, he will be able to destroy every single production building. What a nice counterattack from Archangel, dude. That's crazy. Gloin got crippled down. Lourdes is using his sword to get into the rage mode. And Gloin is tanky, but is he tanky enough? Does he have heal? No, he has no heal. Oh, I mean, that's going to cost your life, Lourdes, because the sun is going to come eventually and take you down. He has also Man of the Hill Summon, which is a bit less impactful in BFME 2, because you have no fire, which makes them good against units only, but not against buildings. Isengard will be able to defend himself, but he actually lost the Uruk Pit and the Warg Pit, which will definitely buy some time for Archangel to recover. And now he's up all of a sudden to 775 command points. And Isengard is down to 525. That, I mean, that's what I'm telling, you know? Like, <clears throat> the the comeback potential, I believe, is kind of huge in this one. In the, in the mid to late game, one push can deal so much damage that you can come back to the game again. And I believe that's like a perfect proof that this is being the case. Because Archangel was behind all the time. And now, with one single push, he is not only in a good spot, but he's even leading. Sharku is almost level 2. Uh, the War Hero has also Man Eater. And level 10 is gonna give you the. Uh, level 9, sorry. It's gonna unlock the Team the Beast, which is gonna give you the chance to steal the enemy calf unit. I don't know if this is permanent. I've never seen this before. Because there is nothing like that that tells you that's for a short duration or something, you know? There is a chance that you might steal them permanently. I don't know. Isengard is going to be forced to retreat. We have battle wagons. Man of Deal will be special summoned from the spellbook. Okay. So battle wagons are doing a fantastic job now. Just keep them alive. That's very important. I'm assuming... What is that? Wall up. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm assuming he's reviving his Gloin. Temporarily. Okay. So it's going to be a for, for a short duration. What is this Vorchan animation from time to time? Do you see that? Like, it was just looking like Warchant on the screen, but he was not using it. Okay. Oh, oh! Be careful with Sharku. Gloin is back on the field. Level almost 8. I think Gloin is the most seen Dwarven hero in this game, too. Getting him to level 4 is kind of easy. Then you have Shake Foundation, and that's gonna just be a massacre, you know? You go around and kill the buildings one by one. Isengard is in a defensive spot now. And actually, guys, we might go for the game number 5. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, though. I don't want to jinx it. But Yusuf was telling in the chat already that this is going to be 3-2 for Archangel. Let's see. Sharku is running for his life. Isengard is building armory now into level 2. That's going to give you the chance to get heavy armor and forge plates. Already purchased. That's pretty nice. That's going to make your uh, pikemen and... Urukai are, you know, gonna be tanky. Damage is not a problem because you have, of course, the Warchant, uh, not Warchant, but Lurz's leadership permanently, which means lots more, a lot of more damage. 50% damage boost. Oh, Man of the Hill. And I love that. That's one thing I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, you know? You get rewards for killing summoned units. That always bothered me the most in Rise of the Witch King, that you don't get anything. No power points, no experience points, literally nothing for killing enemy summoned units. If you kill Balrog, you get nothing, no value. You kill anything, doesn't matter. You just lose your time and your spells or your uh, hero abilities, you know? You don't get anything from it. But here you get some value of that, which is very important in my opinion. I think it's Sharku. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy. Gloin is almost level 8, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, thank you for helping me on the on the Middle Earth folder. No problem, dude. I don't know what I helped you with, but if I helped you, you're welcome. Look the heavy armor, guys, on the Urukai. You see that? 
this is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. They have heavy armor and also big shields. They look golden now. I want to see their durability. Lourdes is level almost 6. Is it possible to cripple Valrog? Nope. That's not possible. Okay. The extroverts are doing a nice job. But... Oh, Freezing Rain is going to be chosen. Freezing Rain is a debuff which cancels uh, also Freezing Rain from Open End, Darkness, Cloud Break and Healing. And covers the map in rain. Enemy units are losing for the entire map. I think for like 3, three minutes, 150 seconds. Uh, that's like 2.5 minutes. Uh, a quarter of their health. Uh, I mean, armor and damage output. Pretty, pretty nice. Sharku, level 4. And Hobbit Summon will be used now. Okay. I mean, rain into Balrog, but again, he's still far away from that. You know, he needs still 20 power points. So it's not going to be anytime soon. Dude, actually, you know what? The game number one and the game number two were kind of fast. I mean, the game number one was kind of fast. And the other games were kind of lasting a long time. The game number one was kind of finished in like five minutes or eight minutes. And all the other games are lasting a long time. And that's going to turn the games into a fiesta game, of course. Is he going to go for the Cloud Break to counter that? I don't think so. I mean, he shouldn't because he was already picking the Man of Steel and now should be going for the 25, I think. Would be a better choice. Pikes with upgrades, heavy armor and forge blades. Run, battle wagons, run. Almost 8 power points collected. We have full command points for Dwarf Star. Oh, look at who is here, ladies and gentlemen. Gimli, the son of Gloin, is ready to fight at the side from his daddy Gloin. He has also armor leadership here. Armor inspiring. Armor buff, sorry. 35% armor buff. It's like from the Tainted Lanes, or for example, you know. Or the Human Wood. That actually warms my heart, you know. Daddy and son side by side. He's right clicking on the slam. He's gonna use it whenever it's available. And Gimli is going to be a monster once he's level 5. Gimli gains 50% damage, double speed, but loses armor against structural arrows. He has an 80% chance to knock back heroes. And trust me, this guy is going to be fast. Like, really fast, you know? 950 command points for dwarves and 800 for Isengard. A man of the tempo. Oh, sorry, 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 yeah. Okay, didn't know that. So, Man of Deal is 10 power point summon. I'm just always thinking back to Rise of the Witch King, in which it's 15 power point summon, you know? Isn't he also fast? Yeah, he is, of course. I've, I mean, yeah, that's very similar, though. Like, besides the, besides the armor leadership, everything is similar. I mean, he doesn't offer you leadership in Rise of the Witch King, but has the leap attack, the extra, and the slayer, of course. Man of Deal is available. Um, okay, the Warp Riders, you need to be careful. They have... They look so different with the heavy armor. They look like black war riders, you know? The Vestation will be used to stun. To get away. To deal economical damage as much as he can. The counter attack. Gimli is level 4 already. In a blink of an eye. That's crazy, dude. From level 1 to level 4 in a second. One level away from getting the Slayer unlocked. I mean, look, remember, Isengard has Lourdes, you know? And Lourdes can use the cripple ability. Gimli's movement speed doesn't matter because he won't have the chance to move any further. Man of the Hill into the Rallying Call potentially. Rallying Call, the Builder is getting in safety. I want to I wanna keep an eye on Gimli. Leap attack, leap attack, my dude. What is the Builder doing? Oh, Man of the Hill. I think the Isengard army is so strong now. Builder also tanky, dude. The Isengard army is so strong now, guys, with the upgrades. That's Oh, that's what I'm talking about. You see? I think that lasts 30 seconds. Okay. You can't even leap, I believe, right? Yeah, you can't leap when you are CC'd. Lourdes with the cripple. Oh, the daddy is here and saying, Don't touch my son. Leap attack at least one time. Oh, he's dying regardless. And the daddy is gonna die as well. The army from Isengard, though, with this much... Look at the Forge Blades and stuff. They have leadership from Lords. Dude, 
They are hitting very hard, my friend. Isengard power points are rising to the sky, rocking to the sky. 23 power points collected immediately. Yeah, actually, Isengard is building an army, Wolfy of Mori, in this one. You are absolutely right, my friend. Uh, 24 power points collected. Units level 7, I see. Pikeman level 7. Loot is level 7 too. I mean, I believe you cannot win against them without upgrades yourself. Like, either you need to go for upgrades or just outspam him big time, you know? Loot is in a safe spot. The mindshare is going down. We have 26 power points collected. Why does he have still so many command points? Uh, he was expanding wall hubs. But Isengard is definitely ahead now. I mean, he's so much ahead that he has 25 now himself. Which means he has to summon dragon. And dwarves, they still need 15 first and then 25 right after. Look at the summon dragon, boys. I summon the red eyes black dragon in attack position. He's not as strong as he is in Rise of the Witch King, I can tell you that much. In Rise of the Witch King, these buildings are dying in one, one second or two seconds max, you know? So he's not dealing nearly as much damage as he does deal in Rise of the Witch King. But look at the graphics from the dragon, though. Looks pretty nice. Oh my goodness. Pretty nice graphics. Every production building is gone. This is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Their armor is thick and their shields broad indeed, but I believe I cannot believe that, dude. <laughs> I mean such a back and forth series all the time, but I believe Mustafa got this now in his pocket. This Isengard army with heavy armor and forge plates are just very strong, you know? And that's a proof that upgrades are not useless. They are actually worth it. Look how strong they are looking like. Good luck dealing with them. Where is, where is uh, Gimli, the son of Klein? Did he lose them? No, they are here. Um, okay, he has level... F he has sleep attack. Cloud break. But even the fortress is getting blown up. Hobbit summon the last stand. Will you follow me one last time? Ha ha! Not even level 5. Oil Bottle, he's, he's trying hard. He has not even rebuilt from the Spellbook, boys. The Fortress is not gonna make it out alive. And I believe that these are the last seconds of Archangels in the tournament. GG is going to be called offensively from Mustafa. Offensive GG is always rude. Ah, Gimli is going down without hitting level 5. The Hobbits are going down from the Shire. And as he loses the last production building, this game is going to be over with that also the series. And everybody who was betting on Mustafa will get some points, of course. And Mustafa, ladies and gentlemen, is moving on to the quarterfinals. Oh, he has one more production building somewhere? There. Oh, he's building one. He's trying to stall time. He's hoping that Mustafa might lose connection or something. You know what I'm saying? Last hope. <laughs> oh, no. Look at this Isengard army, dude. March. Oof. The, the, the burst. The clump. The surrounding. He was using the vestige. What? <laughs> Uh, Arkin is like, oh, it's over? I don't think so. I will just, you know, run, run around and build more and more barracks all the time. This is one of the things I hate about PFME to the rise of Twitch King, you know? Because when people are abusing that, it can be actually very annoying to deal with. That's not gonna happen in Battle for Middle Earth 1. That you have settlements, you know what's going on, and you can just build or destroy the settlement and you are good. You are good. You are good to go, I mean. But here, you can always go around, you know... I enjoyed more of my off host wins. I enjoyed more my off host wins. What? What is that supposed to mean? Oh, 
apparently one meta for Shanks boy. Um, he's tilted because they played apparently off stream, you know, but that's against the rules. Like that's against the rules, my friends. 